In this video, we're going to look at changing the coolant or antifreeze with a Ford Duratec HE. This is the two liter, but the 1.8 liter is the same. And uh, this engine is in a Ford Mondeo, but uh, the Duratec HE was used in a number of other Fords, uh, particularly the uh, Focus Mark II. Uh, it's probably its most popular use. First thing you'll need to do is uh, get access to the bottom of the radiator, which means lifting the front of the car, uh, jacks and axle stands maybe. And you will need these three things. You'll need new coolant, about four liters of it. You'll need pure water, quite a bit of it. And you'll need a catch tray, a reasonably large one, and a funnel. Now you should use uh, pure water or distilled water as opposed to tap water um, when you fill or flush your radiator. Um, because uh, mineral water is bad, it can have things uh, start growing in there. You want the water to be as pure as possible. Uh, you'll need roughly 5 litres of water per flush that you do. So multiply that by however many flushes you intend to do. Uh, and then you'll need about, you know, about 4 litres at the end to do the final top up. Now as to the uh, coolant itself, you will need uh, concentrate, uh, OAT, which is organic acid technology, uh, long life coolant. Uh, it's usually red. The Ford spec um, is purple now, I believe, and it's sometimes orange. Actually, the color is not very useful because different manufacturers use different colors according to their own weird and wonderful ideas, and there is no universal standard for color. So the safe thing to do is to make sure you reference this Ford specification, which is listed on this um, container. Uh, that's this uh, M97B44-D. Uh, Ford spec, uh, which is the correct one for the Duratec. Right, so uh, with all our stuff, let's get on with it. To get access to the bottom of the radiator on this Mondeo, we need to remove the uh, radiator under tray. And to do that, we need a Torx T30 driver. And then we're just going to undo all of its little screws. and once they've all been removed it pulls out backwards and then you will have access to the little rubber drain plug which is at the bottom right hand side of the radiator and is in a terrible location because uh, it's immediately in front of the subframe and uh, coolant that gets drained out of it just goes everywhere as you are about to see so get your catch tray uh, underneath approximately the drain plug and then you need to uh, undo it uh, usually they are reasonably easy to undo with a screwdriver. In my case, I, uh, it was quite stuck and I was having trouble. What I'm using here is a um, handle of a fork, I believe, and a, a pair of pliers to turn the fork because I was needing that little extra leverage. And uh, as you get it undone, obviously fluid will start to leak out. Once it's uh, undone sufficiently, you want to get up and undo the expansion tank cap. This is going to allow it to drain fully because air will now be allowed to go into the system from the top and cue old coolant going everywhere. Um, so this creates a bit of a mess and which you're going to have to clean up. Uh, as far as the car is concerned, as you do multiple flushes with uh, water, which we're going to do next, you will be draining um, fluid which has progressively less and less coolant in it. Uh, which of course is the whole point, but that has the effect of essentially cleaning the car for you as you do it. And as far as the ground's concerned, you're going to have to just clean that up the old-fashioned way. Uh, you need to do that, don't just leave it, because uh, antifreeze is toxic and poisonous for animals. Uh, for example, your neighbours aren't going to appreciate it if you leave it lying around for their cats and dogs to drink. Okay, so you let that drain until it's uh, pretty much done its thing. At this point, obviously, the expansion tank will be empty. And then you get back down and you um, replace the drain plug into the radiator. Uh, you don't need to do it up tight at this point because we're not finished. It just needs to be enough to prevent the, um, the water that we're going to be using to flush it from leaking out while we do that. Okay, then you're going to grab your pure water, your distilled water, and fill the expansion tank up. Like I said, you'll probably use about uh, 5 liters of water per stage. Um, now the reason that we can't do this all in one stage is with each flush it's impossible to completely flush and replace all of the fluid in the system. There's always some considerable amount of fluid coolant left over in the engine which we can't drain. So all that we can do is, is do multiple flushes so as to get that remainder of the old coolant down to as minimal a level as we can. 
And I'm going to do maybe three, maybe four flushes in this case. So uh, fill the tank with water to the max level or slightly above it and then uh, replace the um, cap, but only loosely. You don't need to do it up tight and then start the engine. And we are going to let the engine warm up um, until the heater is generating hot air and no further than that. In this case, about 55, maybe 60 degrees Celsius, according to the uh, cylinder head temperature sensor. Um, the reason we don't want to let the car get any hotter than that is um, the engine will be too hot to safely pour cold water into. If we did that, we'd risk cracking the uh, engine block, which of course would be bad. But we do want the heater system to be opened up and allow its coolant to be flushed through. Otherwise, it's just going to remain full of old coolant. So once we've run the engine for a bit and we have felt hot air coming out of the dash, then we simply drain our um, flush fluid. And at this point, we are now repeating a cycle and there's nothing new to show you. And you just do as many flushes now as you think you need to. Uh, if you want to do a comprehensive job, then you would do this until you start to see no antifreeze. That's to say, until you start to see transparent water um, in the drain fluid. And this is telling you that you have now got, you know, mostly pure water in the system. You can uh, see the huge difference here, and this is my final drain in this case. So now we're ready to do the final fill, which means we can properly replace the drain plug, that's to say tighten it up properly. And then we can look at adding the actual coolant, antifreeze. Now the um, total volume of the cooling system on the Duratec HE is 8 and a bit litres and the uh, usual specification with um, the coolant concentrate is to make it 50-50 with water, which is all to say that you want to add just a little over four liters of coolant. And the reason that you need to use concentrate instead of a ready-made mix is illustrated by the situation that we have right here, which is that the, um, the cooling system at the moment is filled with a as yet unknown quantity of water because we've been using it to do our flushes and we don't know exactly how much is left in the system but we do know how much coolant we have in our bottle here so what we do is add four liters of it and then we're going to top up the remainder with pure water and that guarantees that we have 50 50 mix of coolant and water so this is actually a five litre container of coolant concentrate and I'm uh, obviously leaving just a little less than one litre in the bottle. And then I'm going to uh, finish filling the system with pure water. You'll notice that I go over the max level when I'm doing this. That's because I know that the system is going to bleed itself when we start the engine and thereby run the, uh, the water pump. Um, there's air trapped in the system at the moment until we do that. Uh, speaking of which, uh, some, some of you may be used to having to bleed cooling systems when you do this using little bleed screws on the engine or the radiator. Uh, with these Fords, you don't have to do that. The system is self-bleeding and the expansion tank is arranged in such a way that as you run the system, all of the air in the system will make its way to the expansion tank. Um, and you know, you'll see that in the uh, level dropping when you uh, first run the engine after filling it. So all you need to do is watch that level as you run the engine. And of course, if it drops below the max, then top it up with water. Otherwise, you're good. So uh, don't worry any more about that for just now. We want to uh, drive the car a little bit before we do a final check. So um, get back under and reinstall that um, under tray if your car has one. Uh, while you're under there, you could check that that drain plug is not leaking. Although uh, typically they won't leak until the car is up to full temperature and therefore full pressure on the cooling system. And then uh, once you've driven the car a little bit, then um, jump back under the bonnet and have a look at the uh, expansion tank level. And it may well have uh, dropped down a little bit more as you've driven the car, in which case, of course, you just top it up with more water. And then you really are done. Okay, hope this was helpful for all you uh, Duratech owners out there. Have fun.